morning, gentlemen. I think I'm going to digress a little and discuss about a few of the Indian rulers, you know. I mean, during the days when the British East India Company was on the ascendant in India. And one man which uh, I'm going to start with talking about is Tipu Sultan. And now there are a lot of people in Karnataka, all over India, they say Tipu Sultan was the tiger of Mysore. Wonderful. I like this simile. But what sort of tiger was he? A tame tiger? Or a wild tiger? Or a caged tiger? I think he was a very tame tiger. And he didn't have military acumen. I don't think he's ever read the principles of war. And one thing we must remember that he had a very short reign and he was facing someone called the Duke of Wellesley at that time, who later became the Duke of Wellington and who defeated Napoleon in the Battle of Waterloo. Now what Tipu's father had done was that there was the Wadiyan dynasty, which he was a Hindu dynasty, which he had dethroned and he'd become the Sultan. Hyder Ali at once had gone and even captured Madras and he then had to give it up and came back and then he died and Tipu Sultan, his son, took over. Now Tipu Sultan, uh, as a military historian, I will tell you, was a very poor general. I don't think any comprehension of uh, military warfare and I don't think he ever studied the principles of war. Or perhaps he didn't know about them, that's most likely. He believed in his Durg mentality, that is, he should sit inside a fortress and wait for the enemy to come. That's the biggest flaw which the Indian thinking had, military thinking had in those days, and continued right, I think, even now. So, gentlemen, when the Duke was advancing against him, because the British had decided that he must be removed, and they had one or two small wars earlier before the final battle took place and the Duke was marching with this army, basically the Madras regiment at that time, the Madras sepoys, they were marching from Madras, which is about uh, 200 kilometers from Mysore. So they were moving at the rate of about uh, 7 to 8 miles or kilometers per day. So And it took them about two months for them to march from Chennai, that is Madras, to Mysore, the capital, the Seringapatnam of uh, Tipu Sultan. Now, if a general and a Sultan has so much of leeway that he knew the enemy is coming for two months and he was just sitting inside his fortress, he didn't, it didn't occur to him that why don't he take his army out of the fortress, go and attack the Duke when he was its most vulnerable, when he was advancing. At that time, you know, the advance were more like a picnic, I'm told. I'm afraid about it. There were Nash girls going along with it. The Duke had excellent uh, staff along with him. Excellent cutlery was being served for him. The camp, the army would march seven, eight days, sit down and relax for the night and then get up and march again. He had a very poor opinion of Tipu Sultan and somehow maybe he knew that Sultan is not going to come out of his fortress. And he didn't come out of his fortress. He keeps on sitting there for two months. And this is one of the enigmas of Indian history. And I don't think uh, anybody can say he was a tiger of Mysore or anything like that. I mean, it's a misnomer to call him that. He was just sitting inside. I mean, he had no idea of what military comprehension is. And very soon, the Duke received, reached and surrounded setting up The siege began. Now, we all know what happened after that. Some people betrayed him, the fortress was breached, and Tipu Sultan was shot dead. That was the end of it. And he appeared to have some tooth and tigers which he was keeping as pets, which were also shot dead. And the end of Tipu Sultan came like a bimper, and the warrior there nicely was again put into power by the British. And they are still very much there in Bangalore now. So, gentlemen, uh, I don't think we should give any credence, any importance to Mr. Tipu Sultan as a military historian. I will not comment on his policies or what he did on conversion or the burning of the churches in Malabar and all that. I mean, I'm concerned with his military prowess, which was zero. And 
it's a self-commentary. But then one has to call a spade a spade. We shouldn't keep talking of some of the men who did nothing and as great tigers or something like that and who never won a battle in their life and finally got defeated, killed, and that was the end of Tipu Sultan. I'll close now and say, gentlemen, uh, there's a new appreciation on Tipu Sultan. Jai Hind, glory to India. Please subscribe to my channel, share it to your friends, and come back for more. Goodbye. God bless.